All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about uh, solving miscellaneous equations. Uh, some of them will be polynomials, which we've uh, discussed in previous sections, um, but we're not limited to polynomials, so you'll see in a few examples that uh, we branch out to some other different types. So first example we'll look at, uh, w of the fourth equals negative 27w. Um, this happens to be a polynomial, so as we continue on, let's keep in the back of our mind that uh, we're going to have four solutions here when we're done. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do uh, is actually move over the 27w. Uh, a very common mistake on a problem like this is dividing by w. Um, but remember, w is a variable, and we don't know what it is. Uh, if it happens to be 0, uh, we've just divided by 0. Additionally, we've eliminated one of our, our four uh, necessary solutions. So we've got w to the fourth plus 27w equals 0. Um, at which time now we can factor out a w. And when we have these two factors now uh, multiplied together equaling 0, you can actually see we do get w equals 0 as a solution. Um, so now we'll move over to w cubed plus 27 equals 0. Um, we'll go ahead and factor this. Uh, this is a sum of cubes. So this will factor into the binomial, w plus 3, and the trinomial, w squared minus 3w plus 9. Once again, want to make sure we have it set equal to 0. Uh, so <clears throat> two factors uh, set equal to 0. Uh, we'll go ahead. This gives us w equals negative 3. So now we found two of our four that we needed. And then the other two will come from w squared minus 3w plus 9 equals 0. So we have a quadratic. Um, we would always try to factor it, uh, although this one won't factor. Uh, if you think about where it came from, it came from a factor form already, so of course it's prime. Uh, so we'll have completing the square or the quadratic formula uh, to finish this one out. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, use the completing the square method. Uh, in doing so, our leading coefficient has to be a 1, and it is. I'll go ahead and put blanks in as I move the 9 to the other side as well. <clears throat> now, half of 3 would be 3 halves, and we'll square it. If I put a 9 fourths on the left, I need to put a 9 fourths on the right. The left side is going to factor into w minus 3 halves squared. And on the right, we get negative 27 fourths. So continuing on, we'll go ahead and square root both sides. The left would be w minus 3 halves. The right would be a plus or minus. We would have an i because of the imaginary, uh, the root, or because of the uh, negative under the even root. Um, the square root of 27 would be 3 root 3. So I'll have a 3i root 3 over 2. And finally, w equals 3 over 2 plus or minus 3i root 3 over 2, giving us our final two solutions uh, to the original equation. All right, so in the next example we'll take a look at, um, you can see this is not a polynomial, um, so we'll have to proceed a little uh, more carefully uh, with not knowing exactly how many solutions to expect here. Um, so. We've got a square root plus a square root. Um, definitely uh, don't square both sides of this. Um, you can't, for example, take this square and go across the plus. Uh, you would have to multiply that out. Um, so don't square both sides initially. Uh, instead, what we're going to do is we're going to isolate one of the radicals um, and then apply that squaring both sides rule. So I'll go ahead and I'll isolate the x minus 36 square rooted, which gives us 2 minus the square root of x. Now, in squaring both sides, and I want to be sure to uh, not make a mistake on the right, so writing it out as, as I did probably is a little bit safer. Um, on the left, we get the x minus 36, and on the right, uh, again, it's a multiplication. It's a, it's a foil of two binomials. So we have a 4. The outer gives us negative 2 root x. The inner gives us negative 2 root x. So we'll have a negative 4 root x, and then finally a plus x, okay? So now, um, cleaning it up a little bit, um, you can see 
we can subtract x from both sides and they go away. Um, I also have now, I'll go ahead and move this guy over to the left and combine this to the right. Uh, there's no really uh, reason to move them one way or the other. We just have to pick something, so that's what I've selected. Uh, 4 root x equals a 40. Uh, we can divide by 4 at this time, and square root of x would equal 10. We'll square both sides once again now, and we get x equals uh, 100. Now, remember, we're not guaranteed any type of, uh, any, any specific number of solutions anymore, so we always want to take this and go back into the original to see if it works. So if I take the square root of 100 plus the square root of 100 minus 36, I should get a 2. So 10 plus, uh, and 100 minus 36 is 64, so square root of 64 is 8. Well, that doesn't equal 2. So what that means is we've just found an extraneous solution. Uh, x equals 100, while we didn't do anything incorrectly, um, actually is not a solution to the original equation. So the answer to this would be no solution. Now, um, well, the reason we created this extraneous solution was because of the step right here where we squared both sides. So just remember, uh, whenever you solve these types of equations, um, you will have to come back and check your answers to make sure they work. Um, there'll be times where you have two solutions, uh, one solution, or in this case, as you saw, no solution as well.